Uh, we have multiple uh, aircraft here that are part of the continuous bomber presence. So we have the KC-135, our air refuelers, and then we also have the B-1 bomber back there um, that provides our strategic deterrence out here in Guam, which is uh, PACAF's number one uh, priority there is to be um, able to fight tonight. And that's why we have these aircraft here. We also are always working with our allies and partners, and that's why you'll see other aircraft uh, on this ramp that are not assigned to Anderson right now. I'm sorry, and can you also introduce your name and uh, rank? Sure. My name is uh, Lieutenant Colonel Acuzio. I'm the Deputy Operations Group Commander here at uh, Anderson Air Force Base. All right. um, can you tell us about the base operations uh, right now? That's what you're here to talk about, right? Is it business as usual? So the continuous bomber presence, we've been here since 2004. We operate on a daily basis. We, uh, this airfield is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So for continuous bomber presence, is that uh, mainly the B-1 or also other bombers? Right, it's a constant rotation uh, between the B-1, B-52s, B-2s come out here as well. And really what that does is provides uh, the ability for all the units in the United States to train the, uh, the bombers in North Dakota and South Dakota and Whiteman Air Force Base, Missouri and Louisiana and in Texas. So it gives everyone the opportunity because Anderson Air Force Base, Guam, is such an ideal place to train. So what, uh, can you tell us what bombers are here right now as far as the continuous bomber present? Is it just the B-1s? It's just the B-1s right now that are here. About how many? Uh, I can't disclose that information. Can you say what, like, units? What, what units are so right now we did have a swap out. Uh, Dias Air Force Base just left after being here since February, and Ellsworth from South Dakota just arrived here about seven days ago. Can you say how many B-1s are deployed here? No, I can't okay. tell that how many of it either. Can you say why this uh, continuous bomber presence is important for the U.S. Air Force? Well, again, it's important because uh, they enable us to provide our number one mission, which is uh, prepared to fight tonight, pre prepared to prevail. Um, again, we've been doing this for 13 years. And again, it sends a message, uh, deters our adversary, and reassures our allies and um, partners in the Pacific here. And it's such an ideal staging base because we are obviously closer to mainland, man, mainland Asia than we are to the continental United States. And that really uh, helps us as a staging ground to uh, joint service interoperability, um, other ally interoperability. As you saw the other day, we, had a, uh, uh, we did an exercise with Japan. We did an exercise with South Korea. Right now, there's a Guam exercise going on right now. It's with the United States Navy, uh, New Zealand, Australia, and Japan. Okay, so um, is, so there's, is, this is a routine exercise training ongoing. Um, is there routine exercise or routine training going on right now? There is, we, and we train every day. We are always uh, our readiness, and that's what makes us uh, uh, ready to fight tonight because we have this power projection here right behind us. We couldn't do that power projection uh, without uh, having those bombers and those tankers here. Uh, we are resilient, and again, we have this high readiness that we are constantly training. Uh, prepared for anything. We don't train for a specific threat, we don't train for a specific scenario, but we are training always with our allies, with our partners. Can you tell us about some of the capabilities of the B-1? The B-1 has uh, multiple capabilities. Um, obviously it's a bomber, so it carries bombs. It has gravity bombs, it has uh, GPS guided bombs, it also has standoff bombs, so we don't necessarily have to get directly over the target to drop. What's a standoff bomb? A standoff weapon is a weapon that they can launch and pretty much leave from X amount of distance. So a gravity bomb, you'd have to be pretty much right over the target, right? A, gra um, a GPS guided bomb, you can be, a, you don't have to be as accurate because GPS will hook in and then guide the bomb. But a standoff weapon, uh, you just fire, you know, miles and miles off the wherever you're at, you're at wherever the target's off of. If that makes sense. Any other questions on that? Can these carry nuclear weapons? The B1s who are out here right now cannot carry. Uh, they are not nuclear capability. But the B-52s and the B-2s that come out here, part of the continuous bomber presence, are nuclear capability, are na nuclear capable. Anyone else? Any other questions? Uh, just one point of technicality. Um, let's say there is something that happens that warrants a response. Uh, can you give us a, uh, something like a time frame, how fast we can actually get something uh, going? So again, we are always at a constant state of readiness, and the majority of the people here we live here. So I live here, my wife lives here, my two daughters live here, my son uh, lives here. 
we go to Tumon Bay, my son, go, they go to school here, we go to Jeff's Pirates Cove. So we obviously have a vested interest in here and we feel safe here right now. And that's what this continuous bomber presence does. It assures our allies and deters our adversaries there. Um, Secretary of State, uh, uh, Honorable Tillerson just came the other day, right? And he said, right now there is no imminent threat from North Korea here. But you're, you're saying a response would be immediate or? Can you provide any details of the nature of the training happening right now? Of nature of training? Yeah. Well, momentarily you're going to see two B-1s take off on a mission. Obviously, I can't tell you what they're doing or where they're going, but we are training every day, um, all the time, just so we're ready. We're always prepared to prevail and to fight tonight. Okay. Test, test, good. Hey, again, I just want to thank you all for coming out here, and I just want to uh, reemphasize that the people of Guam are part of Team Anderson. Um, the grandfathers, the fathers, the sons and daughters, the civil service men and women, the guardsmen, the Air National Guards. The only reason these bombers can get bombs on target is because of the tankers. The only reason the tankers can get bombs on target, uh, refuel is because of the maintenance, the support that they get from the base, and that the people from Guam su uh, support though. So the people that fly the aircraft and the people of Guam, they're just as important as the folks that fly the aircraft. And we could not get the mission done without the people of Guam.